We have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make these changes. <coughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We are near Arusha town in Tanzania where agriculture is a main activity. In the village of Moivaro, we meet Grace Kimambo, who lives on this one acre farm with her family. She grows many different crops on her shamba, such as beans, bananas, amaranth, and cassava, which she sells at the local market. But lately, her crops are not doing well. We have come to see the farm and give her some advice. Grace, thank you for inviting us to your farm. We are very grateful. How long have you been farming? Not long time ago. It's like four years or so. What are you planting? Vegetables and bananas. What kind of problems do you face in your farm? To begin with, diseases, but more importantly, markets. You can harvest well, but that's the end of it. It remains here in the farm, nowhere to sell it. Do you have any livestock? Livestock and chicken. Uh -huh. Grace, how can Shamba Sheep Up help you? Since you have seen how things are here, they don't look nice. For me, what I need most is the knowledge, more than capital. Well, that's why Shamba Sheep Up is here. They're going to give you technical advice and make sure that you're shaped up. Grace has spent a lot of time and effort investing in her chicken business. But diseases sometimes prevent her from making any money from them. It sounds like Grace's chicken business needs some expert advice. We know just the right man for the job. We asked Caleb, a veterinary officer with Ultravetes, to pop by and advise on her existing chicken venture. Caleb, you've had a look at the chicken shed. So what were your observations? A number of things need to be changed from sanitation, hygiene, and the structure itself. For you to prevent diseases, there are a number of things to do. Which one is better first of all? Is it to prevent or to treat? Vaccination. Prevention is better than treatment. And for you to prevent diseases, consider three things. One is vaccination, two is biosecurity, three is proper feeding, and, of course, prevention of parasites. What is biosecurity? Biosecurity is preventing that germs from reaching your chicken. And how do you do biosecurity? It is a number of things. First, it starts with the type of your housing. Is it good? Does it prevent rats? Because you need to prevent rats. Also, sanitation. Like I have mentioned to you, sanitation in your chicken house is not very good. You need to start with clean environment. You clean the house, the roof, the walls, and the floor. At the floor, you put wood shavings. After doing that, you need to disinfect by spraying with a disinfectant called Ultrazide. Ultrazide is used to do the cleaning and disinfection. It can kill all bacteria, all the germs, and it is safe for you and your birds. After washing the house, you need to do a good disinfection using the Ultrazide. Also, remember the feeders and the drinkers, you clean and also disinfect with Ultrazide. Disinfecting the house is only the first step to stop diseases in the chickens. There's another dangerous problem to stop. The second thing you need to do in biosecurity is prevention of rats. 
you need to keep in mind that rats bring in diseases, they feed on the feeds of your birds, also they eat the chicks and even your chicken. They eat the, the eggs. So you need to prevent in whatever the way. The best way to prevent rats is using lani rats. This is a rodenticide specially meant to prevent rats. And it is very good. Why? Because it can attract the rats that you have said are hiding themselves in holes or in the bush. It can attract. It has very good smell that pulls the rats. And once a rat has eaten, it must die. Another good thing about it is that this does not kill the rats instantly. When rats die there and then instantly on that spot, it will give the others a signal that there is danger here. So that creates bait shyness. They run away, so you'll never catch them. But for this one, the rat will eat today and die after three or even up to five days. In the meantime, he will be calling the other rats and they eat, then wait for death. Nevertheless, this land rat, when a rat dies, it does not leave bad smell. It dries up. So it also has an antidote. If a child by accident eats lanerat, you take to the hospital and is given vitamin K and the child will not die. It has an antidote. So it is fairly safe. Apart from biosecurity, the next thing you need to do in preventing diseases is vaccination. I know Newcastle has been a problem to you and there is a program you need to follow in preventing diseases in chicken. Many of the diseases which cannot be treated in chicken are caused by viruses and it is well prevented through vaccination. In your local area, your local veterinary doctor will give you vaccination program which you need to follow to the letter. Okay, so in terms of feeding, you know, besides what she's feeding her chickens with, is there anything else that she needs to add? Yes, the most critical type of feed that chicken normally lack is vitamins. I can see you give your chicken mostly grains and they are likely to lack vitamins. Another thing that we, you, chicken normally lack is amino acids. There are three types of amino acids which are very important in chicken and if they miss, they will not survive. Fortunately, we have put all those vitamins and those amino acids into one pack, which is a supplement in chicken. It is called amylite. Amylite is a supplement for feeding your chicken and it is added to water. Caleb, thank you so much for that information. So now tell us, where do we begin? We begin right away with the housing. Okay, let's begin. If Grace is serious about rearing healthy broiler chickens, she must stick to the hygiene rule book. The first step is to clean the chicken house, removing all the dust and cobwebs and the old droppings and rubbish from the floor. So currently we've cleaned the house, what next? The following thing is to disinfect the house before we place the wood shavings. And then the wood shavings will be disinfected from the area they have been dried, then brought in and we will disinfect the whole house from the roof to the walls and the floor, including the wood shavings. After that, we clean and disinfect the drinkers <coughs> and the feeders and place in there. In the drinker, we shall add water having vitamin amylite. After placing, we will finally do a trap of rats using lanirat. To place lanirat, cut a hole in two ends of a cardboard box. Sprinkle the bait into the box and close the box, then put the box next to the chicken house near the bushes where the rats will pass. While Naomi was busy with the chickens, I took time to have a word with the young people at home and find out what Shamba Shepap could do for them. 
So as young farmers, how would you like Shamba Sheep Up to help you, Caleb? The great thing which you, you, you can do and which will help is education because we say education is the strongest weapon in the world. So just education about the farming, education about how can youth participate in agriculture, how can the youth have good product in agriculture. Best is education, that's all, mm -hmm. that's as I can say. And how about you? For me, I would like Shamba Ship Up to help us get loans. We need finances to enable us do farming. Thank you so much. We'll work on that. Now, that will be my homework. I need to find them an expert on youth farming. Along with changes in temperature, climate change also brings changes in rainfall amounts and distribution patterns. Grace, as a farmer, you have experienced different kind of uh, rainfall patterns. The rains are erratic, sometimes they come, sometimes they don't come. Why do you think that is so? It's true. Well, the rain has not been very predictable and it is making us lose our crops. Mr. George, why do you think this is so? This is so because uh, the issue is globally now is uh, climate change, which is believed to be contributed by human activities in different aspects from the industrial up to down there to our normal subsistence farmers. Now how does a farmer like Grace adapt to these changes? She should do some changes in his normal practices, farming practices like using improved varieties of seeds, even using some technologies to prepare their land, to prepare their Fertilizers, use fertilizers in general, whether it's organic or inorganic. Try different types of seeds, crops, maize or beans or whatever. And since temperature and water both affect the processes that takes place in the soils, climate change will therefore cause changes in the wild soils. So, we have to take good care of our soil and our expert tells us how. Let's talk about climate change in relationship with the soils and water. Let's start with the soil first. Yeah, soil being a, a, a living thing, it has a lot to do with the, to get the, 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 the fertility. So when, when the changes are, are, are there, we don't expect anything to be decomposed without having enough moisture or rain in those different seasons. When a farmer leaves something trashes in the, in, the, in the field and it no rains, so it won't be decomposed. So the soil will be bare. A lot of uh, erosion agents will be the, in playing, like wind erosion, soil erosion, because the land is bare. And how about water? When the rains doesn't come on time or doesn't come at all, the amount of rains from those water sources will be decreasing. And most of the farmers or the, the people around them, first of all, Mount, Mount Meru, they are totally are subsistence farmers. Most of them, they are using a little amount of water from the sources to irrigate their horticultural crops and those uh, other plants and also domestic uses. So the relation is there. Let's talk briefly about tree planting and especially fodder crops. Which one should the farmer plant, especially around this region? The forages are very important, apart from fruit trees, but they can grow caliandra, lucina, some, some grasses which are recommended by the scientists, which are doing better in this area. Climate change means the weather is unpredictable. George thinks that the rainfall in this area might decrease, which will make it hard for Grace to grow enough grass for her cows. She needs to plant fodder shrubs like Caliandra, Mulberry, or Leukemia. These are drought tolerant and can give her fodder all year round. To plant Caliandra, dig holes one foot deep and one foot wide. Plant the seedlings and water well. The shrubs should be one meter apart. We've covered so much in the first half of the show. And there's still more to come right after the break. Coming up, will we manage to keep our promise to Caleb and his sister? 
To receive all Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word all with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just a leaflet for this farm, SMS farmer, that's the name of the farmer, with your name and address to 30606. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We're still shaping up Gresky Mambo's Shamba in Meru District in Arusha, Tanzania. So let's get to work. Before the break, we had advised Grace on the proper way to manage our chickens. We also had a chance to look at climate and use of natural resources. And still, we have a lot of advice for her. Now, Consistent healthy yields don't just happen by accident on a shamba. It takes careful planning to condition the soil for best results. And this is where a soil test is vital to the success of any shamba. And we have the results. Timos, I can see you are ready with the soil test results yes. for Grace. Yeah. Could you tell us how it reads? Yeah, Grace Kinambo is a very good farmer. However, the soil acidity on her farm is 5.1. Therefore, Grace will be required to add agricultural lime in your farm. Uh, when you look at other nutrients, for example, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, you are doing well on phosphorus only. Your nitrogen is too low and your potassium is too low. Therefore, you'll apply an NPK fertilizer 17, 17, 17. How about the use of manure? Yeah, she is using good manure on a farm, but to improve more on soil health. Uh, grace will be required to add one ton of manure on your farm again. That's what you should do to improve your soil health. If you don't have manure from cow dung, then you can use chicken droppings. If you don't have chicken droppings which are enough for your farm, then use plant residues to make your own compost for your farm. Timoth, what other crops can she grow? Potatoes, uh, Irish potatoes, onions. And lastly, you must use certified seeds from an agrovet. Those ones will give you higher yields and ensure that every time you weed your farm so that the weeds do not take up the nutrient elements in your farm. Grace has learned a lot from the experts about her chickens, protecting her soil and cows from drought, and how to improve her soil. She has started putting the lessons into action, but she still needs a little bit of help with her vegetable garden. So Grace, what do you have in your vegetable garden? I have planted vegetables, amaranth. Do you think you've planted well? From my side, I don't see a problem. Elwidi, do you think she's done well? There are small problems here and there. Grace has planted without observing the right spacing from one plant to another, from one row to another. She has also not mulched her crops to reduce water loss and also reduce weeds on the farm. I have also noticed some pests. When you tuck the plant leaves, you see them flying away, the white flies. Let's start with the spacing. When planting various vegetable plants, especially amaranth, from one row to another should be 15 to 20 centimeters. But also from one plant to another should be 10 to 15 centimeters. It is important for you to get a good population of plants and with the recommended spacing, your yields will be more. Also, there will be less competition between plants for water sunlight and also nutrients from the soil in a good spacing. We also normally advise farmers to observe recommended spacing and your yields will increase. For amaranth, if you follow these instructions, your vegetables will be healthy, bigger and strong enough since there is no competition for water, nutrients or air. Turning to insects or pests, well, it's a common problem. Most varieties of vegetables are prone to attacks by insects. So we advise farmers to follow instructions and guidelines on dealing with pests by using pesticides to prevent insect attacks. Another problem here is mulching. Mulching is important 
in a vegetable plot and other crops as well. But mulch have the requirements too. They must be well dried first, without seeds at all. Otherwise, if they have seeds, when you water your plants, the seeds will germinate. And that means that you will now be dealing with weeds too in your shamba. We advise farmers to use well-dried, seedless mulch like banana leaves to spread on the shamba. One benefit is that when you cover the soil, you make the soil retain more water rather than losing it through sun heat. If the sun gets to the nursery, or the soil, more water is lost through evaporation, yet your plants needs the water to grow and mature. Also, by using mulching, you reduce the amount of watering. If, let's say, you used to water twice, thrice, or four times, you will just water once in a week. Since your mulch will prevent water loss, another benefit is after a while, in the farm and continuous watering, the mulch rots away and becomes compost manure. When the next season is ready, you will find that your shamba has good nutrients for your plants and for you to get better yields in the following season. Early on, I'd asked the young people in the family what they need to be able to go into farming. After hearing that they need more education and access to support, we asked an expert to visit us and tell us what the government of Tanzania can do for them. Fewer youths are getting involved in agriculture, but this is due to various reasons. One is capital. Another is lack of land to till, as traditionally all land and agriculture is for older people. These are some of the reasons why youths are not getting involved in agriculture. Also, as youth, agriculture has a lot of challenges. For example, in this region, you can till the land, but it's not fertile and it's seasonal, and so you may end up with nothing in a season, just because the soil is not productive. Also, the same farm is used for other crops by your parents. You may want to grow vegetables, but them, they have bananas. So in that environment, bananas and vegetables will not intercrop well. The bananas will be shedding the vegetables, and this makes the vegetables not do well. These are some of the challenges that stop the youth from bothering. There is this habit of inheritance, and I will talk to mama about it. Inheriting what your parents are growing is not good at all. We have to change and align our farming with modern ways of farming. If your parents are growing bananas, and for many years you're not getting enough, remove the bananas and plant something that will do well and meet your needs. Plant tomatoes, onions. You can also search the markets and see what is needed, something that you can benefit from very quickly. All right, I can work on the farm, me as a person, but not all youths have the knowledge they just do it just because they have to. No education. So you just dig and plant. And plants will grow. Plant tomatoes, plant vegetables, and the crops will grow. That's over for them. Nothing more. So not all of them have the information. That is why you find someone tilling a quarter acre is producing more than one who has seven acres who is producing very little. This is because the one of the quarter acre is using modern technology to do his farming. So for me, where do I get those new farming techniques? As an authority, we have started investment or entrepreneurial groups or basket savers or circles for people to save and borrow. You can get capital and a chance to afford farm inputs. If you have started farming and you are stuck somewhere and you have joined these production groups, you can be financed to buy various farm inputs. But also as an expert, we advise you not to just focus on tilling the land. Learn other things that you can do off-season that can help you generate more income.
So, you can also learn how to irrigate a small portion of your land for off-season purposes. You just don't sit and wait. Of course, once you plant, there are periods in between before weeding or harvesting. What can you do during that period? We can see that it is important for young people to get into farming and agribusiness. And to do this, they need all the services available to them. The governments of all the East African countries are very keen to encourage the youth to take up this challenge. And we hope that Caleb and his sister do so. It's been another fantastic shape up here from Arusha town. We have happy chickens and a very happy farmer. With all our tasks complete on this shamba, it's time to go and tell Grace Kwaheri. It's been yet a great shamba shape up show here. And Grace, tell us, did you enjoy shamba shape up? I'm grateful for your coming here since I have learned a lot. And I have learned new farming technique. I was doing things at my level down there. But now I am informed and I'm happy you people came. So what I have learned, I'm going to put it in good use and I'm sure I will succeed this time in farming. Grace, if you're happy, you're also very, very happy. Thank you very much. It's been another great show from Arusha, Tanzania. And we'll see you next time right here on Shamba Shepherd. We've covered so much, and if you are like me, you may not remember it all. Weather, diseases, new crops, type of crops, cows, goats, chickens, markets, and so much more. Shamba Shape Up has a service to help you, so you don't have to remember everything. It is called the Ice Shamba, and it can send you information to help you know what to do on your farm and when to plant. You can even call and talk to an expert if you get really stuck. Just send an SMS with the word JOIN to 21606. And you can shape yourself up anytime and anywhere. Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter, at Shamba Shape Up, or simply text 30606.